Yeah, so there you have it. Um, I think we'll just call the, um, we won't do any, or I don't know, I, don't, I always say I'm not going to do something, I'm going to do something. Luigi would know about that. Um, keep changing my mind. Silly girl. Anyway, <laughs> just happens. Um, but basically, yeah, we just shared a couple of really nice um, songs by a group that's so beautiful called ABBA. I don't know how long it's going to be before things start to move. But if I'm here for another night or another night or two or another week, well, there'll be more songs to share, I guess. Um, I think people might relate more to, um, you know, seeing ABBA and that and seeing photocopy art somehow. Um, but that's the thing. We've got to have some kind of interface with people... You know, typicals. I mean, they're not all bad, I'm sure. It's just that they seem to have some kind of agenda against us and it really, you know, it's really stopping us from having our dreams and from helping them too, you know. We really love to be useful, you know. We don't like to be on the pensions and on all sorts of nonsense, but, but that's the problem. But the thing is, if we, get, if we do get to make this Silicon Valley and I, want, I don't want to give up on it, because we've got no future that way. But that was Luigi. He was wanting to do it 20 years ago. And basically, he's basically imputed that into me. I felt, I feel like Luigi has influenced me. I'm taking on Luigi's dream. He's a scientist, right? The thing that's beautiful about us is that although we're so similar, we're like both into copiers, it's like he is the original, right? He's the big guy. He's got the knowledge. He's got the full bandwidth scientist, right? He's not... He hasn't, like, it's like it's beautiful because he's a male, right? And, you know, the males are always depicted as being bigger and more heroic. Um, males are usually physically taller than a woman, stronger. And, the, and that's the thing now. The thing is the man is, like, is depicted in the, in the movies or in the heroic literature, you know? as being the leader in the relationship, you know, the one who guides the woman. Now, the problem with today is that the way it's gone is that, man, we've got feminism, okay, because feminism is actually a backlash. Because the thing is, when men abuse the women, right, we're not going to accuse anyone here, but basically the reason why we've got feminism is because when the man abuses the wife or the girl, Right, it can happen with all demographics here. Yeah? Well, the problem is we then have a situation where the man is being weak. He's not being the man. Like some men think he could, you know, and, and that's another thing I want to say is that when a man cries, and a lot of Aspie, As people with Asperger's syndrome or nerds, geeks, tend to be very soft, you know. They can be hard. There's different types of geeks. Um, but there are certain types of geeks probably more, more towards the white end of the spectrum. We tend to be very fragile and very, and they can cry. And the thing is, like we're told that men shouldn't cry, but I'm really against that because I really love the idea that a man can cry. Like, like the thing that I find beautiful is that when Luigi and I get together and make love, or when we're feeling sad, like I want to see him cry. Like not because I want to see him hurt, as such, but I love to see a man that just has. It's, it's vulnerability. It's a, it's a beautiful thing to be able to be vulnerable in front of each other. It's not good when you're doing that in front of your enemies. That's an absolute rock reverence. But to be able to see a man cry and not feel it, it's, you know, and that's the thing, we've got to let men do that, to be soft, you know, because male and female, you know, men can have feminine qualities mashed in with the masculine qualities. It doesn't make them gay or... You know, and another thing, we've got to stop bashing the gays. Why are the gays being bashed? Or why are the gays become gay? I can't fully understand, but I think it's because it might be because they've been shown so much hatred um, and abuse that that's what they take on. A lot of as people with Asperger's syndrome might be, might account for the, the gay population, what appears to be the gay population, but many of them transgenderize, which means they, they lose their feminine masculine qualities if, and they become, well... Asexuality is a common problem, and that you know, and we've been perceived as asexual. It's because again, bullying can actually shoot them. At. Bullying behaviours or bit feeling unhappy with yourself does not help the libido, and it can actually, it, it actually shatters sexual drive. It makes you feel cold and alienated, and you feel like you're on guard, 
and men that want to have their sexual organs cut off because they don't feel like they're men and women want to have their breasts taken off it's, it's not good but when the but the problem can be repaired um, when they're repaired I'll tell you one thing oh it's beautiful um, so that's the thing you know um, and you know the old saying garbage in garbage out computing oh my mother taught me that mother was a programmer oh my god she was in the industry herself she was in programming back in the 60s hmm. I think she's got Asperger's syndrome too and she's, she's actually been tormented as we speak she but the funny thing is my mother is a toner head the thing is we didn't realize it but let's just define a toner head okay let's just just expand on the definition of a toner head okay well the obvious manifestation of a toner head or a photocopier industrialist is that they love photocopies they might you know do technician work and they might mess about it's pretty obvious but then they might put on a mask and you don't see see that and they take on another mask but the thing is when they pop in full form but a tiny head I've discovered can be of different the different levels of tone heads and some tone heads just manifest themselves as people who like to read a lot of books who love books and who love poetry who love writing photography a lot of these tone heads have actually converted themselves from photography up to photography but also you know but, but, but you can tell you know that the ones a lot of them just love words and pictures you know like books reading books writing poetry um, I had a friend who was in the same stitch. She was a, a Christian girl, um, and she had this, she was done done down by this this bug. But the thing is, it's often caused by sexual abuse and family problems. Many of these people had been through. But I didn't know she was. I didn't think of her as a toner head until just months ago, because she flags with the similar symptoms that toner heads or geeks have or acids have. And the thing that she has is that she likes poetry and she likes painting or drawing oh actually not painting is such a drawing pictures and she, and she ended up being really obese and it really hurt it's really horrible to see what happened to her but the Christian church was accusing her as well like saying it's her fault to get fat it's her fault that she was sexually abused you know that, that's not right and she behaved, had similar characteristics that many of you guys take on but she Never knew what what she what you know she died she actually she actually died in 1994 Christmas Eve and she was a, that was one of my friends I had and she, she was my last friend I had and the thing is she now has poetry that no one has published right she was hoping to get her poetry published and she was on a pension and she was she had always depressed you know, seasonal affective disorder she had all all the markings and but she wasn't into photocopiers um she found, my, found a bit my my might be a bit of a turn off but but she would have been a tiny head without knowing it because you don't always know it and it could just be a po an interesting poetry or writings and, and pictures of some kind and the thing with, with, with shannon right that's her name shannon o'brien is that um well, she was a fighter, but she wasn't a fighter as in that she put her fists up. But man, she battled with epilepsy. She battled with um, all sorts of stuff. She was sexually abused as a child, raped by her stepfather since she was a six-year-old or something, and lost her childhood, lost her adulthood. She never got to marry. She never got to experience, you know, the beauty of marriage and all and success and. She's, she's 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 gone now, and and she lived alone in a housing department house, in the house, and she had, and no one really wanted to help her that much, you know. The church didn't. The, well, the church weren't as brutal. They weren't as brutal with her as they were with many of us, but they were brutal with her. And to say that it's someone's fault when you've been sexually assaulted or raped or abused, you know, as a child, that's foolishness. But why is the church doing that? It's not fair. It's not good. It's like they've got little demons or something in their heads. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be broken because it's not. It's not sure. Not fixing our world. But Shannon O'Brien. Yeah, back to the poetry. The unpublished poetry. She now has poetry that's gotten lost. No one in the church essentially has picked up on publishing the poetry. So what? 
one of the things I would like to do. And my mother, she is a tone ahead because she likes, she's interested in technology. She likes to buy top of the range stuff even though she's on a pension herself. She's an alcoholic. She's got missing teeth because she's had dental problems and she's got dentures now. So she's manifested herself as a tone ahead on a lower level. And she loves, she's, she's always told me, write a book, write a book. She wants, she wants, she's trying to write a book on her family. So that's how a Tony head can look like too. And they don't even, because of what happened in, in the 90s, most Tony heads didn't even, we didn't realise much. We didn't get very far. It's as if the paper was going through the paper path of the device of a copy for illustrative purposes. It was going through smooth. The copy job was smooth and running through it smooth and all of a sudden, just at the exit assembly, just after the paper emerged from the fuser assembly, it strikes the, the exit, I think, the stripper fingers, a stripper finger was out of place, metaphor. Bang, bang, paper jams, that's it. And then we never got that job out of the, the copy job, never emerged out of the output tray, and that's, and that's how it is. Most of us never got married. Most of us never realised our technological dreams. In fact, most of us are sitting in limbo some of us have died. Many of us are uh, like in our 80s because it, it's the main, and it's really hard, you know, and to see those people not realise their dreams, to die not realising their dreams, breaks my heart. And it breaks Luigi's heart. You know, 20 years of waste, you know, and then everyone, and then the world's falling apart. Global warming, electronic waste, wars, that was not the dream of our future future is meant to dream about machines that made life easy and then we just didn't get it there, we didn't make it and it was a waste and now we've got, a, we've got so many years to break up and fighting the past is like, oh damn, it's like trying to pick up a stone to smite Goliath, you know, David and Goliath. But that's it, Shannon O'Brien, how she wanted me, she, well she wanted the poetry published but she never got it published so what I'm hoping to do as well as my mother, who may not have much time to live, she might have five years to live. My mother is in her 70s, early 70s, my dad's in his 70s, which is really sad, you know. So one of the things I've got to do for mother, and also Shannon, is, well, Shannon needs her poetry published, and when I get access to, you know, when I marry Luigi and we have machines everywhere, one of the things I like to do is use a photocopy to self-publish um, independent books, as in books that don't get to the printers, you know, because of money and popularity issues, and and I've got I've got to help my mother print her stuff off, but also Shannon, I've got to find it. I've got to conduct an online search for Shannon's poetry, which related to dealing with her sexual abuse and that, and then I've got to print that off and publish it because she wanted it published and she never got to see it published. So we've all had our lives have just been truncated, paper jammed, you know. We never got to see things. The job never got finished. It, many of it's because it, it never happened. It's like file not found. It's like you know. It's like no one knows about this. They think we we should stick with what we've got now, which is really foolish. So anyway, got to go. But Luigi Benedict. Mm, okay, you get the idea, don't you guys? We do not, we are not tin men or women if we've been, if we've worked ourselves out or if the world has helped us, someone has helped us. So we're not, it's just the way the world has treated us, that's all. Goodbye.